In our next instalment, we're going to the dyno. I want to see this engine on a dyno, and I reckon I can convince these guys to show us an overlaid dyno map, GM versus Ford, because I still struggle to believe that they've got these two completely different engines exactly the same. So you want to put one of these on the dyno, do you? Well, let me see first. There's a lot of IP here that hasn't been released, but I'm sure we can let you have a little look at it. So here we are. I've talked this up, haven't I? And we are so privileged to be here at Craigstead's Engine Dyno, the supercars facility that's done all the validation, testing, paratisation, equalisation of this new GM Camaro Gen 3 engine and the new Ford Coyote engine. And behind here, this is the dyno door. It's kind of like a vault, isn't it? Let's go in and take a look. So here we have a typical, albeit very good, engine dynamometer room. Now, Superflow is the maker of this dyno that we're sitting on industry standard and what's interesting about this particular one is that it has this beautiful airflow system so where you see this duct coming down here I can tell you and exiting out there up above us is four hundred and eighty seven thousand dollars worth of machinery air conditioning if you like to control and regulate the flow across the engine now all that stuff's really important to validate the performance of the engine when we're comparing GM and Ford. So it's got repeatability. That is everything. So it needs to replicate what it's like in the supercar. So the exhausts are the same. The intersect of the exhaust is the same. These headers are based on what'll go in the new Gen 3 supercars. The water temperature over here replicates what happens in a supercar. The oil temperature replicates what happens in a supercar. Same fuel, same exhaust length. Same everything. So when we pull the string on this thing again and again and again, and they have done hundreds and hundreds of hours of back-to-backing the GM and the Ford, we know that we're getting repeatability in our results. So ticking over right there is our new Ford Coyote engine, ready for Craig to pull the string. And I've got to say at this point, I'm still gobsmacked that two engines of such different architecture of different capacity from two different manufacturers, he reckons he's got them bang on. As I said, he's a mate. He used to be my own engine builder. I trust the guy. If he says they overlay really, really well, I'm gonna believe him. But I've said to him, mate, you're gonna have to show us. So here we are in the dyno, or at the dyno operator console. Craig sitting here ready to what we call pull the string. There is no string, it's a lever, but it's an old racing term. Now, Craig wants to pull the string when this temperature gets up to about 95. But what's really cool about this, this is incredible access we're getting here. Over here that I can't show you too closely, but I can tell you with my hand on my heart, we're not gonna stitch you up, there's no, gonna, no tricky editing here, is the power and the torque map of the GM engine. And what we're going to do is close in really close so you can see when Craig pulls the string on the Ford Coyote, just how closely this thing's gonna overlap. I haven't seen it, and I trust that he's telling me the truth. Here we go. Here we I've got to say, I, I actually, I'm blown away. I'm genuinely blown away. I didn't think for love nor money, this early in the program, that this could be that close. Like, well done. <laughs> 
So you can see it closer. That's that Coyote engine overlaid with a GM engine. Now, what do I see there? Apart from two very, very close power and torque curves, this one power, this one torque, I also see a nice flat curve, much flatter than the curves we have now, which is, means these engines are gonna be strong. They're gonna be hard to drive. They're gonna have a lot of power coming off slow curves. I really like what I'm seeing. We've showed you the tools and the techniques that have allowed Craig and Supercars to test, to validate the repeatability to get parity equalisation right across these two engines. And I sincerely hope you've been happy with what you've seen like I am. So that's the conclusion for now of our updates on the Gen 3 engine program. And I can honestly say I'm, I was impressed when I walked in here this morning. I'm way more impressed walking out of here this afternoon. But it's actually, it's not about what I think. I reckon it's much more about what you think, the supercar fan, because what I've tried to show you here today through the work that Supercars and Craig are doing is that I think we've just shown there, we can validate that, you know what, the work is good. The engines are close. The engines are gonna race hard. We've got big, screaming, stonking V8s that we love. And that battle that started in Camaro and Mustang in the Australian Touring Car Championship way back in the 60s. Well, that fight is gonna go on into the future. And looking at what I've seen today, it's going to be closer than ever, and that's good news.